People whose work brings them into other people's homes. What crap have you seen? As most of these stories will feature tales of hoarding I'll give you a story with a bit of a twist. I am a plumber by trade and although most of my work is with processing plants and factories, occasionally our boss will do a favor for a project manager or other higher level contact. We were asked to go and install a RO system. It's a type of water purification system at someone's country home. Most people have no need for water that pure. A filtration system and UV treatment is way more than enough. But if the client wants to pay for it, then he gets what he wants. So me and my co-worker drive to this guy's house in the middle of nowhere. It's a pretty standard looking house nothing out of the ordinary. We go inside and he brings us down to the basement to this big steel door and a set of steps leading further down. This guy had excavated and over the last few years built an underground bunker. Think of place in 10 Cloverfield Lane but this was way better built. It was still rather spartan as there was no furniture yet. But this place was massive. Possibly about 5000 SQ featuring of living space. There was an air filtration system that would bring fresh air in and pump it out to several spots on his property. A series of buried reservoirs to hold fresh water pumped from his well. After it went through his newly installed RO. He had power from a mix of the grid and a small solar plant on the roof of his house and another in a field away from the house. As well as a backup generator. There were shelves in the walls with lights installed for growing small crops. Even one room that he said will be dedicated to raising a couple of chickens. This man was geared up to survive the end of the world. And had spent a ton of money to do so. I have seen a lot of preppers before but this was a very different level of prep. See, something like that I wouldn't have a problem with, as long as the owner is sane. I work as a technician in a pharmacy, and sometimes I'll offer to do deliveries at the end of the day if they're not too far and they've missed our regular delivery guy. This one lady, who was very hard of hearing, was starting on a weekly pill organizer that we'd prepare for her, so she invited me in so I could explain it to her. Immediately I saw two cats, who ran off very quickly and smelled a very strong door of cat crap. I assumed there was a box in the other room that she wouldn't remember to clean, and that she couldn't smell it. And when we sat down, I realized there were large carpenter ants everywhere. On the table, on the walls, on the ceiling, on the carpet, etc. She didn't seem to even notice them. There are worse stories for sure, but I'd been serving this lady for 5 years at the store and would have never suspected such a thing. I was so thankful for the fresh air I was breathing in when I left. We supplied MDF baseboards to a 90 unit government assisted living building during new construction. The contractor didn't want to pay for waterproof so he bought regular MDF. The entrance doors were knocked down steel frames. The floors were slate tile. 90 families moved in in one day, and then the building superintendent mopped all the floors at about 2am. The slate floors are uneven and a lot of water got used to clean up. The mop water soaked into the MDF baseboard, which expanded so much it pinched the metal frames tightly to the doors and jammed every single unit door incredibly tight. I got there around 530M to do some stuff and the banging and hysteria started. 90 units where people were locked in after their first night. Many thought this was a final solution scenario. We had to have someone turn the handle and someone else boot the door full force to get them open. One at a time while each resident woke up from hearing their neighbors panicking and doors being booted in with steel toes. Pretty hectic for before 9am. Sounds like several lawsuits waiting to happen. Construction materials are not where you want to cut costs. I'm in and out of thousands of houses every year, so I've seen a lot. One of the strangest was finding hidden cameras. The people were moving in that day, so not theirs. Set up in the attic and pointing into bedrooms and bathrooms. Also in the same attic, it was a big one, was a completely furnished hidden room that was only accessible from the attic. Needless to say, the homeowners were pretty freaked out. Just last week I went into a house to fix something, trying to keep it vague. Four cats, four dogs. Place smelled like crap garbage everywhere okay not the worst place but up there the thing that creeped me out were the quotes on pieces of paper in every room i visited he has things written down they will not break me cowards and backstabbers ruined my life i will not play ball crap like that he also whispered to his pet about me what i was doing how i was going to help him succeed yeah that was weird 
I've mentioned these people before. I was building an addition to an existing house. The owners were. They were a weird pair. Husband and wife. The husband looked like Gollum and the wife looked like Hagrid. They were both very slow mentally and they smelled terrible. Like they bathed in pure ammonia. Even the new addition started to smell. The more we sealed it up the more it stank. And we hadn't even opened them up to each other yet. At the time I wasn't anybody important on the crew, so I'd never had occasion to enter the house itself. Until one fateful morning when I was there early, the power to the exterior outlets had been cut and the electrician hadn't installed the new ones yet. So I decided to run an extension cord from inside the house. I opened the back door, intended to become a hallway entrance, and the smell nearly knocked me over. It was like the ammonia smell that clung to them, but rammed to 100x. Breathing shallowly through my mouth I ventured into the dimly lit interior. The living room, or at least I think it was a living room, was a little maze of containers. Cages, 18 inches tall and a couple feet square, all stacked one on top of the other. As my eyes adjusted I thought they were filled with rabbits. The ones by the door were stacked such that I could see over them. Elsewhere and against the walls they were stacked to the ceiling. Each and every one of them with an occupant. I stepped closer. Not rabbits. Cats. Hundreds of cats. Each cage containing at least one. Some two or three. Each stacked four or five high. Nothing under them. Each one pee and crapping on the cage below. I got the frick out of there. I worked in people's homes helping with their disabled kiddos. All the houses were a bit messy and chaotic, but not unsafe or dirty. But I had one family with a severely disabled toddler who always had poo and pee on her. Her mom didn't brush her hair because she won't let me. I would tell her, you're the mom, you are in charge. But she was very ignorant and lazy and unable to keep up with grooming house cleaning. She watched other children for her family, so the other kids would always wreck the house and bring in rocks from the outside, which my tiny client would put in her mouth. So we made a goal for the mom to remove small objects from the floor and tracked her compliance. The house had roaches. The carpet was filthy. If the toddler ran out of diapers, she would let her run around without one. So she would pee on the carpet furniture and her mom would just wipe it with a paper towel. I would leave when that happened because I could not run sessions with no diaper on the kid. I brought my own blanket from home to run floor time sessions with the kid. I asked my boss if I could wear scrubs so I could change after, but she said no. I asked to be switched to another case and my director said that working in utter filth was part of the job. Once, the toddler grabbed my head and was giggling. I was used to her and didn't think anything of it. But the rest of the day, I kept smelling poo. By the end of the day, I realized the smell was coming from me. I took my hair down and the smell intensified. I took a hot shower and washed my hair. The next evening, I was stricken with E. coli and had to go to the hospital. I had to miss a few days of work because I was so ill. My company fired me for taking too many sick days, which is bulls because I had reported how gross the house was and I spent so much time in preschools. It makes you sick a lot, and we were forbidden to come to work if we were contagious to avoid infecting other clients. They tried to block my unemployment, so I appealed and explained how I had reported the problem and received no support. I included a quote from my director in which he said I should find another job if I couldn't handle sitting in pee and cockroaches every day. I won my appeal. We did report them to CPS, not for the mess, but for a possible molestation incident with the creepy dad and his niece. When I left, the mom was pregnant again. I've seen some crap in my day, but that house stuck with me and I still worry about those kids. This is awful. I'm so sorry to read this. Hope things are better for you now. Worked as an apprentice to a private contractor for a year before going back to school. The worst was when we working in a woman's home, getting it ready to be sold. We were painting her son's room, and we had to move the furniture to the middle of the room to cover it with a tarp to avoid messes. As we moved the bed, we found the kid's H stash, complete with dirty needles in an open cardboard box. Kid was about 16. We didn't say anything to anyone. Just slid the box under the moved bed and went to work. We were pretty glad to be out of that place ASAP though. Along with the kid, his single mother definitely seemed to be tweaking at points. And looking back on it I suspect she was an addict as well. On the other hand, 
the best job we had was a 6 month job that started as a front entryway reno for a woman who recently lost her husband. When we started, she kept to herself and spent most of the days in her room, she had some medical issues that prevented her from working, and was clearly very depressed. The entryway renovation became a living room, and then kitchen, and then basement, and eventually a whole home renovation inside and out. The woman kept finding new things she wanted done. In the process of all of this, she started to heal, and by the end of the job she was always out in the living room or kitchen, chatting away with us and feeding us and taking care of us. The last day of work was only a 2 hour cleanup, after which she took us out to lunch to thank us for the renovation and, more importantly, helping her overcome the depression that she was dealing with. I love that lady, TLDR, H addicts and nice old ladies. Nice to have a happy ending in here. I used to work on foreclosed homes as an inspector of sorts. I remember we went to one foreclosed house where all the windows were painted black. Inside were these massive wooden stands with fluorescent lights and nothing else. I don't even think any of the appliances were left. But the thing that gets me to this day though about this house was that the people growing weed there thought painting the windows black would be a good idea. Because that's not suspicious at all. If only there were a way to keep people from looking in through my windows. Some kind of covering, perhaps, a piece of fabric, or something. No, that would draw too much attention. Paint is the only way that makes sense. I'm in nursing mental health. Some of the more memorable things I saw were during my student placements many years ago. For instance, one old guy I visited was a bit odd. As he was talking I was scanning the room and see these framed photos of him from decades ago. He was in full blackface and them. Why he proudly displayed these photos I don't know. Also, as a student, I encountered what I believe was a case of spousal. Munchaws and by proxy, the client was bed bound and had been for decades following a vehicle accident. She was skin and bones, couldn't communicate, and had some type of fungal infection covering her skin. The husband would watch her like a hawk and didn't leave the nurse and I alone with her for a moment. Very controlling, yet played up the carer role. It just didn't seem genuine, and I suspect he was getting secondary gains from the years of sympathy in his role, hence my belief it was a case of MVP. There was also some other guy living in the house who just stood around and watched us like a creep. When we got in the car after the visit both the nurse and I agreed it was extremely disturbing. Nowadays I'm in psych and the things I see L don't phase me. Home care worker here. We see some fricked up crap caring for the elderly and disabled. I had this one house a middle aged woman and her elderly mother, who made me sick to my stomach. I smelled the house from the driveway, a mix of animal and human crap with a side of decay. They were hoarders. And not just any kind either, they were food hoarders. My god, the smell on the inside made me gag when I stepped in the kitchen and I change adult diapers for a living. This crap was unholy. I cleaned up piles of food which had expired years ago, buckets of discarded pee and dozens of dead mice. The worst part was, they had a dog, that poor thing. They had a full grown cocker spaniel which wasn't allowed outside, ever. I felt so bad for it. For years the dog went without fresh air or sunlight. They just let it crap on pads in the kitchen of all places and refused to let it out for fear it would run away. Not to mention my client, the elderly mother, was the poster child for assisted suicide. We became very close over the year I spent trying to help them get their lives together and repeatedly this poor old lady tried to off herself in increasingly creative ways. Crap broke my heart. In the end, I had to force adult protective services and the humane society to get them out of there. I couldn't do anything to fix that fuckery. The daughter was a former cop and had kept the authorities out for years. But after having them called out to the house for the third time they finally believed me and checked the mother out. They were horrified. Needless to say, old lady and dog were out of there within the week. Fricked up part was, the dog got out first. I knew of a case in my line of work where the abused dogs were removed before the abused kids were. I once saw a woman that had built a massive castle the length of a typical bed for her bunny rabbit. It was as high as the ceiling and it had a moat and everything. Now that's just impressive. Carpet installer for 30 years. The list is endless. Some highlights. 
full on sex dungeon in the basement. NYC male prostitutes with custom wallpaper silver drawings of gay sex on black background. Did several buildings for a developer. Later saw him on front page of paper getting arrested for kidnapping extortion he was Russian mafia. Have showed up to find piles. Not one pile. Piles of dog crap all over the house. A secret computer lab in a bazillion dollar home behind a bookcase. Down a Luon concrete hallway and a giant steel door. Had the power company running an underground line outside the home I was working in. They hit the water main for the entire area. Guy had a water spout in his front yard like old faithful only it didn't stop until they dug up his entire yard and the water had destroyed the entire bottom half of his house. He was at work had no idea it was happening. I could go on. Go on. Oh boy. Gotta do this relatively frequently. I work in mental health so. A lot of homes I go into just reek of mental illness. From the outside in. Messy, dirty and chaotic looking homes are a big indicator of mental health issues. Some houses I've ventured into have this strong odor. Coming from a variety of things like uncared for pets, dirty laundry, old food, and just general human stench. Almost always there is both trash and clothes all over the floor. Broken crap everywhere. Because it's kids I work with, most times there is holes in walls and property damage caused by said kid when enraged. Girls typically leave sanitary pads tampon cartridges, sometimes used, on the floor. I've seen bugs and bug traps because they are infesting the home. Went into a house once where I found out later that it was infested with scabies. Obviously I was super paranoid about getting them for days. One girl's stairs had nail polish staining her stairs because she threw open bottles down in a rage. Uh, typically, there is also at least one cat, usually more. These cats don't use the litter box, or, if they do, it hasn't been cleaned in so long that it is just plain disgusting. So that means that the cats will just pee on the piles of clothes lying on the floor. Lots of times the kid living there will actually put on the clothes shoes socks that had been previously soiled by animals. Usually the animals are in poor health. It's really quite sad. On the outside, it's easy to tell if the house inside will be in disarray. Unkept lawns. Garden overgrowth. Christmas decorations still up in June. Animal poop not cleaned up. That's all I can think of for now. I've gone home on many occasions after work and gotten directly into the shower. I don't typically go into other people's houses. I'm a mechanic who does house calls which occasionally brings me inside to wash my hands or use the bathroom. The best one was when I was doing a job for a man who broke down at his girlfriend's house. After the job was done I asked to go inside to wash my hands and he says it's fine. I'm washing my hands at the sink and suddenly this naked black woman comes out of a room and gives me a confused look. Her. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Me. I'm the mechanic. Her. You can't be the mechanic. You're a woman. Person I worked on the vehicle for, must be cheating on me, with a white girl at that. What has this world come to? Me. Well, to be fair, I'm not white, I'm mixed, and, I assure you, I am indeed the mechanic. Her. No, women cannot be mechanics, and I don't care what you are, begins to cry. So, the strangest thing I've ever seen on a house call was an overly paranoid, mildly sexist, naked black woman. I tried to calm her down, but it didn't work. Apparently the guy got dumped that night and it was all my fault. I now ask for a hose to wash my hands. I've never heard of a mechanic that does house calls. My world just got bigger. LOL. I work as an appliance repair tech. Good god have I seen some crap. Hoarders are always the worst. I can walk into a person house and tell you. Just based on smell, if they have dogs, cats, rats bugs, birds, or something dead. I've called CPS on two people and animal control on one. Animal hoarders are always the worst. I've been to one where there were at least 70 cats slash 30 dogs. There was crap everywhere. There were even dead cats in the panty cabinets. Another animal hoarder had a small child old enough to crawl. He was covered in animal crap and the mom acted like it was nothing. I've walked out of the bug infested ones. Frick you if you think I'm setting my tool bag down and bringing roaches to my work truck house. I had an elderly lady crap herself in front of me before and act like nothing happened. Maybe I should do an AMA. I've seen a lot. I clean houses. One client has us clean once a week. 
If it lands on the floor, it stays there until we clean it up. Her youngest child is still in diapers. There are usually dirty diapers around the house completely filled of pee. Her bed sheets always have crumbs from her kids eating in her bed. There have been crap stains on her sheets and duvet cover. They have 5 trash cans in their kitchen so they don't have to worry about taking the trash out. Her kids play with toothpaste and toothbrushes so we find globs of toothpaste all over the house. My boss has once gone to make the bed, pulled the sheets back and found a huge pink dildo and the mirror sided nightstand was covered in lube. I'm a probation officer, so I have to inspect people's homes and sometimes search them. First off, countless dildos, vibrators, but plugs, pee, which apparently still comes in magazines, savages, drugs, lots of drugs, guns, more cash than I've ever seen in my life. Earlier this week I pulled a shoe box out from under a bed and it was completely full of stacks of cash. Lots of homes in the more poor areas have major roach infestations which is pretty gross. Some of the circumstances that people live in make me understand why they would want to commit crimes to make money, not that it makes it okay. Two of the worst strangest things that come to mind. 1. A fishing bucket with a cast net inside of it, filled with water. I accidentally stuck my hand in the water when I grabbed the net as you couldn't see the water. I found out later that the reason a bucket of water was in his room was because of his water-based penis pump. 2. Pictures of a girl covered in blood in sexy poses. Turns out they were really into periods and she covered herself in the blood while they were having sex and took pictures. Kind of bizarre to see until realizing where the blood came from. Working in financial services here with insurance and investments, well I've seen a whole slew of different crap between new old clients. Probably the most interesting aspects of the job is seeing people who make really good money for themselves but live well within, and sometimes below, their means. One particular case was a young guy in his early 30s who had accumulated quite a bit of wealth, was making upwards of $85k a year plus bonuses and was living in a rather run down apartment in a bad side of town. Roaches, leaky ceiling, the works, who wasn't looking to upgrade his living situation, ended up being one of my favorite clients, super nice guy, level head, we play golf on the weekend sometimes still, that dude sounds cool. My dad used to install dishes for Dish Network, he was at a client's house and ended up getting scraped up by a taxidermied bear, also, someone had alligators, which is notable because we live in Minnesota. Not me personally, but I've worked with a nurse who does home visits. One of her patients had a very well trained duck. It would greet people at the door and was even potty trained. I now really want a pet duck. Sounds cool until he is constantly trying to sell you insurance. Former door to door salesman checking in. Sold subscriptions for TV and internet. Once tried to sell to a lady, read, probably serial killer whose house was filled with literally thousands of porcelain dolls of all shapes, sizes, styles, and degrees of scariness. She had everything from pristine dolls that looked like they'd never been touched to Annabelle tier filthy monstrosities that honest to god looked straight out of a horror movie. And these dolls were everywhere. Also her floors and, what I could see of the, walls were painted red. Super creepy. 10 stroke 10, would almost get murdered again. What crap. I've been in a flat where the toilet had stopped working so the person people living there had been crapping in the bath. No attempt to hide it or get rid of it. Actually vomited from the smell. Haven't been brought into other people's homes through my work, but I've been on the other end of the spectrum. I'll never forget the maintenance dude in my old apartment complex who awkwardly ignored the ungodly amount of pot related drug paraphernalia and piles of weed on the coffee table with each surprise visit. Could have gotten us evicted but instead he just fixed crap for us. College was great. Haha <laughs> that happened to me recently. I was laying on the floor naked smoking a joint when our apartment building's maintenance man showed up because there was a leak in the apartment below us. I scrambled to get dressed and opened a window but he definitely knew. He just smirked and did his work. About a decade ago I was working a side job cleaning chimneys. Part of the job was vacuuming out the soot we freed up the flue. I was led into the basement by an elderly woman and there was an entire bedroom set down there covered in plastic. It was her son she told me. It's waiting for him when he gets back from the war. Given the amount of dust on the plastic, coupled by her age, 
I think she meant Vietnam. She kept trying to give me beef stew. I said we were busy but if she can spare any to go I'd appreciate it. I didn't eat it, but felt like I had to take it after that. Feels bad, man. I got to gag gift for Christmas of a massive painting of Kramer, from Seinfeld. It's ridiculous yet we decided to hang it up anyway. I had forgotten about it until an electrician came over to fix something and saw the painting. He laughed so hard he had to excuse himself and go outside for a few minutes to compose himself. But I know what painting you're talking about. It is funny. As my work includes working in other people's apartments for about 90% of the time it's easier to say what I've not seen. I've been at a hoarder that saved newspapers, like mountains of them, from floor to ceiling. The only places with no newspapers was a walkway through the apartment from the door to the kitchen, bathroom and bedroom. I think out of a 80 square apartment only 15 of it was not used for storing newspaper. A couple of weeks ago we worked in an apartment that couldn't have been cleaned for ages and the stank was so horrendous we had to use gas mask to be able to work there. And we work with sewage pipes. There was a 5 cm thick layer of old pee and crap in the toilets that had blackened and hardened. Another time there was an old man who had died. Thankfully we weren't in the apartment at the time, but we got the landlord to call the police to unlock the apartment and check it. Turns out the man who had passed had been dead for 3 months and was so badly decomposed they had to hit him with a photo from his apartment. But the saddest thing was an old lady who was blind and partially deaf who only laid in bed all day only listening to the radio, and the only company she had was the aide that came 3 times a day for an hour tops. Also lots of nudity, and not the good kind. I'm talking about 70 and us. If you made it through it all sorry for grammatical errors as English is not my first language. Your English is great really. I wouldn't have known. Provided legal services to very poor, rural individuals. Saw a level of absolute poverty a minority of people know exists. Plywood outer walls. Curtains blankets for doors. Broken windows boarded up. Medical conditions with minimal treatment, like respiratory illnesses, strokes, injured limbs, etc. Which resulted in complete disability. That disability would snowball into a totally disheveled and filthy living space. Pet droppings, trash, essentially a hoarder's style of living without the actual hoarding part. I grew up poor but nothing like this. Saddest crap I've read in a while on here. I used to work in door to door sales so I saw quite a lot of crap. One time I knocked on a door and the screen door was shut but the door behind was wide open and I could see right down the hallway into the house. This guy, who I can only assume was waiting for someone else, literally jumped round the corner at the end of the hallway, bollock naked, locked eyes with me and screamed and hid round the corner again. He very awkwardly asked why I was there and I explained, in between fits of laughter and said I'd leave him to it and I hope he had a great day. Another time a guy opened the door at 11.30am holding a bottle of Jack Daniels that he was drinking from and invited me in. He had three teeth and no shirt on. I politely declined. I went into a lot of houses where people just obsessively hoarded anything and everything. From figurines to travel mugs to old newspapers. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.